Yeah. Okay. So here we are in the interface for the uh, GPIO. Yeah. Okay. So this GPIO first tries to connect uh, to the Raspberry Pi uh, from the socket server which we uh, saw earlier, mm -hmm. and uh, after that uh, it. Uh, uh, tries to uh, communicate with it through the socket connection mm -hmm. so um, what if, that's why we see in here that one of the things which we have mm -hmm. imported is socket library into uh, mm -hmm. Python um, you need two things basically for to build a successful interface uh, in um, uh, Voltron project one is a base register and one is a int uh, base interface so one should inherit from base register of Voltron and one should inherit from base interface of Voltron. Um, and in base interface, there are some abstract methods which is which are defined and these abstract methods have to be implemented since uh, they, uh, this, they have to be uh, implemented because it's kind of like a plugin architecture which Voltron guys have made over here. Mm -hmm. So you just have to fill out the points in between and after you have done successfully and after you have returned su uh, successful values uh, Voltron takes care of most, most of the things even the historian agent so in get point this is a generic method I started basically from uh, you have to start from configure where you get uh, the uh, configuration files so uh, before actually even getting you all the code, you just you need you will always need three configuration files for mm -hmm. your drivers. So you need to set that up, and uh, those configuration files are first is a main configuration file of the master driver. Um, it is okay. Let's go up. This is. I think the main configuration file of master driver in which you are trying to say that I have a driver whose configuration file is over here in this uh, motion address. detail config yes this is the configuration file so mm -hmm. while, when you are loading the master driver uh, you should actually load the motion detect .config files and all other files which are mentioned with it mm -hmm. Now this configuration file, what it points to is something interesting. Um, this motion configuration file, uh, if we go inside, fake driver dot pi. Okay, let's go a little bit up. So this is the motion detect dot config file which I created. Now you have to update the the, the address, right? Uh, yeah. What the address? Yep. Yeah. Because your device now has an, an address. Yes. So uh, I, I do have to update this. Yeah, let's do it now so we can run it. Yes, so this is the address of my Raspberry Pi, which is connected to an occupancy sensor. And uh, the device ID, you can give it anything. Uh, doesn't matter for GPIO right now because we are creating a... And new driver. Yes, right now a pseudo environment for the uh, occupancy sensor. Um, here the driver type is an Im important one of the properties because uh, this decides basically that where your uh, where which interface it should go into so if you have driver type as modbus the master driver will uh, get to the modbus interface if it is gpio it will go to the gpio interface and if it's backnet it will go to the backnet interface mm -hmm. The other files which is more important after this is the first file which I showed you was the first master driver configuration mm -hmm. file. It was okay. Um, it was over here mm -hmm. and it just tells you basically what what drivers to load. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, after this oh. we have the driver GPIO file which tells you how to read the point names inside my uh, device. Yeah, so you have there a CSV file which yes. tells you how to write. Yeah, so um, as far as what I have understood from the tutorials, it can be any type of file. It's 
not necessarily a CSV file. Can you show it, us how it, that file? Yeah, we can get that file. It's here. So this is the file in a basic terminal and CSV files are comma delimited, but we can have a more good look of this over here. Uh, this is basically uh, was not scripts actually. This should go into services core master driver agent and we have our CSV. So this was created just by me because um, we are defining everything for our interface mm -hmm. and that's why we can decide our own points. Mm -hmm. Most basically, uh, what I understood of the point names that they those are the communication uh, requests for devices. Yeah, the, so, it is open. Yeah, and it's just trying to. So here I just had basically two uh, point names. <coughs> one is the heartbeat, and one is the ease motion detect. Uh, ease motion detect I kept it so that we can explicitly ask, and heartbeat implicitly can check about the motion detection. Um, you can it was it was it is redundant right now as in because you can just check everything through a heartbeat message every mm -hmm. point like every 10 seconds and you don't need to uh, explicitly ask it so yeah that that can be done okay so these point names is something which is like which will be the names uh, the request names which would be going to our socket server okay great so as you saw, there are three files. One is the master driver mm -hmm. config file, the device configuration file, and the registry config file of that device where the point names and everything are defined. Is there anything uh, required for the location of those files? Like, they're supposed to be in the master driver no, file? No, because most of the time in all the files, you are trying to give an absolute address to your files. So oh, okay. as long as it is in the same machine and if you as long as you have permissions to ac access, a access to them. those files, you won't have any problems even if the file is located anywhere else on the computer. But, but for the type of driver for the GPO, I think it has to be placed in interfaces, right? Yes, yes. Okay. For the type, for the driver. Py Python file, it has to be placed over, over uh, in the GPIO. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you create any... Can you show me the folder of it? Like, what other... Do you have a, an init? Like, what are the files related to, to this driver? Like, these three files, but is there anything else that you needed to add to make you run? Like, an init or a setup? So, for basically, for interfaces, you don't need any init or anything else. Mm -hmm. You just need your gbio.py file. So, uh, here, I think I lot of have, but this is the only file which I need, need uh, needed it. So that's why we have just made this client app is also basically a prototype. It was not meant for an interface. It was just to check whether I was able to ping to the socket server or not. Can you, uh, so that's the one that you can you open it just to 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 know uh, which one. This one. Yeah, it, all of them. So that is that yeah. is the half the classes. Yeah. Yes. The other one is. The other one is a simple file where I couldn't could have made it anywhere, not mm. even. Yeah, if it has it, to be can be located anywhere. Yeah, but this uh, yes, was... Yes, the one that you explained, yeah. Yes. So try the interface, okay. Yes. Uh -huh. So GPIO is the only file which is actually uh, required over here in so the... So here to go, uh, what are particular... Because you have co you have uh, referenced those, uh, the base interface and the base register class to develop this, right? Mm -hmm. But what is from this code that you have done, what is a particularly for particular for the for the occupancy sensor, for this driver? What is, what are the, the things so, that you think that are different from the other? So anyone can actually make it. Mm -hmm. um, most particular is how would you connect to your device? Okay. That's the only particular thing which I had to decide while I'll, I was making this. Mm -hmm. And as I showed you in the socket connection, this is, um, this is something which I did over here. Mm -hmm. I just added whatever request which you get is the request which you send to the socket ser a socket client and then that should be given to the socket server mm -hmm. so this is my part 
this is the part which is mostly uh, important because you need to decide how you are going to communicate to your device. Mm-hmm. Voltron doesn't care of take care of that. Mm-hmm. You have to, to define, define that. That is one thing which you need to get take away that thing. Um, set point is something which you can also do it like for if our occupancy sensors have something like uh, here still in my one of these if you've seen the server code you could see that the sensor number was hard coded we could actually get the sensor number uh, changed uh, automatically automatically if you yeah, want in the set here. point mm-hmm. we could do that so set point right now over here is basically unused because all our set all, all our point names uh, which in the csv file were read only mm-hmm. so it won't be uh, going into the set point uh, method at all uh, scrape all method actually takes all the read registers write registers and then then it publishes uh, to the um, mod uh, sorry it publishes to the bus what was uh, message, message, bus. message bus in Voltron. Mm-hmm. So, so that's what I do, you're doing here, publishing to the Yes, message. and scrape all method is called like every now and then, like it has a frequency, um, like every 20 seconds or 30 seconds, and that also is decided in the config. Should we correct? Revolt all is passed because we revert all, basically they, they use it to... Uh, revert state of the device mm-hmm. like what it was before I, mm-hmm. in our case it was just an occupancy sensor mm-hmm. we didn't want to do anything with it that's why we just said okay don't do anything just pass through it mm-hmm. and uh, um, so basically if you are trying to build something for a very simple device if you don't want the whole method to be implemented you can just pass it mm-hmm. okay. and it'll just go through by the python interpreter just like that and you won't have to worry about it but if you are going to use it, uh, you need to implement it. Mm-hmm. So this is something I think I took it from uh, the fake driver. Fake driver had this thing done. And uh, I think Kyle mentioned it once time that he always has a parse config method over here. And uh, this is a, this this whole method was very helpful in trying to find out what is the Voltron point name? What is the point name? What is um. the description unit starting value? And the parse config actually gets the config string, which is the CSV string. Mm-hmm. And then we uh, get all the um, uh, uh, the points, the point, points from, the... Yeah, from that. And then we construct it all into an object, which is the base register object. Oh, okay. That is where base register is used. Because here we define what are the points which are we going to take ah, as... Okay. So that, the, that last part that is called, the, the last part that you show, how, how is it called the, the last part of your code? Is when it takes all the the parse config is when it's grabbing all yeah, the information so from the is, CSV file, right? Yes. Okay. So, so, uh, so what, hap- what happens is in any class, the first method which is called is the init. Mm-hmm. It initializes mm-hmm. your object and everything. But then... Um, this is my experience. I don't know if that is the way the stack calls happen, but mostly what I've seen is after the initialization happens, configure is called the first method. The first mm-hmm. method which is called is configure. So what it tries to do is configures the uh, device driver. Mm-hmm. So configuration of the device driver happens in reading the config file. So uh, in config, uh, they, they have the device address, Mm, oh, that's a pity. Okay. That, right. Oh, that, that comes and from... And the, the device yeah. port comes in over here. Mm-hmm. So that's how we get the target address and target port from the file which I showed you earlier. Yeah. And from the config string, registry config string, we get all the point names of the CSV. Yeah. So this CSV, we are passing it to the parse config method. Mm-hmm. Parse config method takes it wraps it into uh, an object of the base register and then inserts it. Okay, cool. So can we run that this agent now? Can we run this driver now? We can run it. To packages and unpackage it. Yeah, we can run uh, it. No, please. Close please. without saving. Oh, we, oh yeah, we have not changed anything there. Yes, and we, we should changed. not. Python has an indentation. Yeah. If we messed up any indentation, it would actually mess up the code also. So, uh... 
so right now my ubuntu is right now having the address of 1.5 mm. and that's why my server is telling me that 1.5 wrote this and so right now let's see is we'll go to the home directory of voltron from there we'll try to mm -hmm. first so voltron me is made up of a lot of agents if it's a driver if it's an historian or if it's mm -hmm. a test agent which you have made everything works um, as an agent mm -hmm. and everything every agent has only one mode of uh, uh installing you call a pack install script you the second for first argument you give is the where is the agent located you give the folder of the agent mm -hmm. the sec the second argument is you give the configuration file address mm -hmm. of the agent and the third is you give the tag name of the agent mm -hmm. So all of these arguments in the sequential order, and you can yeah. Install. So in in that line, like uh, well, you are putting the the tag name, mm -hmm. so that, that you are that name is not anywhere that you are placing there. Yeah, name. so that that name is decided by yeah, you. Yeah, decided that. In yeah. The, okay. You can decide it anything. So that's that's there. So right now, if I've I'm just trying to see what is my trying. status. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first you need to it. activate your Voltron environment. You activate it by this, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see whether Voltron is running or not. You have to make it a hamper What? Oh, go ahead. Uh, so let's see uh, if Voltron is running. I think so it was already running so that's why it gave me an error otherwise it would not have given me an error so it's running uh, now let's see whether what are the agents right now which are installed okay so I have already a master driver agent running but for the purpose of this we'll first stop it remove it install it mm -hmm. and start it again okay. right um let's first stop the agent stop you have to give a tag name mine is master minus hyphen driver hit stop now remove it now this is this step is a little bit important now we are going to reinstall the driver again because we have we changed the IP, the address of the when you change any any file of the configuration you, you have, have to, to package change it again uh, so and so. before you have to remove it so you, you can see to. in the list also there is no master driver okay cool right mm -hmm. all right so let's install it so for installing we go into scripts this is one of the core scripts so yes core and pack install the first argument is the folder so the first would be I already know it's in services core master driver so up till now so one thing which you have to remember is whenever you're trying to uh, make a new interface you are everything doing everything under the hood of master driver mm -hmm. So whatever you create as an interface or a driver, you are doing under the hood okay. of master driver agent. Mm -hmm. So you will give master driver agent as your agent folder and master driver dot agent file. That is the main master driver agent file, which contains all the other drivers, which it has to load as the config file. Now you make your own tag name, which can be anything. And for here, we well, I'll just call it master underscore driver. So this is my tag name for this thing. You have to press enter. It starts adding uh, everything. So into that includes the bagnet, the modbus, and also the, the new agent, the GPO. I think, the I th uh, so for this purpose, if we saw, I think if you Depend saw... Depend the configuration file. Yes, yeah. I, I'll, I'll just open the configuration files because... It actually did not include the Modbus or anything yes. because uh, 
I did not have... Yeah, you're working, yes. We're the ones that you're working on. I had only included two things. One is the back, backnet config and one is the motion detect config. Mm -hmm. So one is the occupancy sensor config and the one is the backnet config. Okay. Okay, great. So, so well, those two go. will only be done. Mm -hmm. Now, this is installed. So whenever you have installed it, you will see this thing is doing a status. You'll be able to see your master driver over it here. Has been added, yeah, and the tag master driver. And right now it's not running. It's not doing anything because that we have not started. Yet. We have not started it, and it's not even giving you any status because it's fresh, new, mm -hmm. and so that's why there is no even status. If it was stopped, like for example, this backnet agent, it would give a st status of zero. Mm -hmm. So, and if it was erroring out, it would give you a status of one. So something which useful information you can get from this list is this thing that whether it's editing out or whether it's, you know, stopped mm -hmm. or something like that. So let's start the master driver agent. So the command for that is Voltron CDL. And then you say start and you give your tag name. And for here, I have master minus underscore driver. And let's start it. And after that, you can see from status that it is running. running. So it has right now loaded two things. Now, there are two things when you if you have to monitor it. So here you can see my driver is writing. Mm -hmm. two how different. do you? But how do you run this? What do you, what do you, ah? That's the the interface uh, Python file, right? What is the name? GPO. GPIO.py interface Python file. So how do you run this this thing? How you are able to see this on your screen? So this is what is Voltron doing. So I was the next part is that how do you understand what the master driver is doing? Mm -hmm. So in Linux you can just do tail minus F and everything what message bus has it or anything which Voltron does for the master driver, they are all into the log file. Mm -hmm because we do not have right now a comprehensible interface so we are just trying to tail a log file and master driver actually tells you everything that I am publishing this I am uh, you know this is devices is motion detect I am publishing this and I am giving heartbeat mm -hmm. so the scrape all method right now is publishing both the things is motion detect as well as heartbeat and we are getting that Voltron is constantly after th every 30 seconds or every 10 seconds it is giving it is publishing this data uh into um into uh so if we, the message bus of voltron mm -hmm. so it, right now if we move something in front of the capacity sensor will we see a change in the in this in this publishing uh no no, no because this is a voltron specific thing okay. we won't ch we won't see the values of it okay so however that's another step, right? Yes, that's the, the, that, that's the historian step. Historian, side. okay. So I'm going to stop here. Mm -hmm. So then we can go on with the historian. Yeah. Okay.